Let's bring in ABC News senior policy reporter Ann Flaherty and pediatrician at Stanford Children's Health and ABC News medical contributor Dr. Alok Patel. So Dr. Patel, let me begin with you. A Moderna a, a executive has told ABC News that he hopes authorization for this vaccine could come in about a month. How important is that, yeah, not just for the population, but given the, the season and the, where we are in this pandemic? Well, Terry, ideally, the season would have been a little bit earlier when we saw previous surges, but we'll take what we can get. Now, what we've seen, what we've heard so far is that data may be submitted as soon as May 9th. And then, as we heard just a while ago, it might take a few weeks. So hopefully in June, we see an approval for Moderna or the end of May. And then concurrently, we see an approval for the Pfizer vaccine as well. And what I will just add is that this data was released by the pharmaceutical company. So we still need to see that FDA approval. That is very important for making sure that this is safe, this is efficacious, and building trust among parents, such as me, who has a one-year-old daughter. And I will want to see all that data before I get her vaccinated. Hmm. I, I, I hope it all turns out I know it will. So, Anne, let, let me ask you about the American Academy of Pediatrics now urging for quick and transparent steps towards a review of the COVID-19 vaccine for these youngest children. So, but why has the process been drawn out for this age group? Well, Terry, I think that's really for two reasons. One is we've had some false starts on, on this program. Pfizer, of course, was out ahead. They had tested this in young children under the age of five, but then had to announce in February that they had disappointing results due to Omicron. So they have had to go dr back to the drawing board and tested a third shot. And that's because they just didn't get the dosing right. The dosing was probably too small. Um, I think the second part of this is that it's very difficult to test vaccines for COVID in children because they are less likely to exhibit symptoms and then to have severe illness. So, you know, so testing it on adults, that was relatively easy during the crush of the, the COVID cases that we saw in 2020. Um, but of course, you're not going to see this in kids. And one thing I find very interesting is while Moderna will say that it, it, their vaccine for children produces the same immune response as you see in adults, uh, we don't have an efficacy rate for preventing severe illnesses because none of the kids in the trial developed any sort of severe illness. So it's a little bit of a question mark around that, and it just makes it tougher to get to this point that we are today. Tougher to get to this point. That, that is one of the blessings in this uh, pandemic, that the youngest were really spared the worst of it. Doctor, I want to go back to your, to your little one, though, and the decision-making process that, that you have made and your family has made on this, because there, there are parents, uh, you know, a lot of parents with little ones, they're very hesitant. They're, you know, they the, the kids don't get that sick, as Ann was just reporting, and there are, uh, you know, they're just wondering what the right thing to do is. So how do you, how do you, how do you go about making that decision for your daughter? Well, Terry, I think the first thing that we need to do is sometimes we don't say anything at all. We just listen. We actually listen to hear what those concerns are for parents. Because what we've seen based on surveys, based on my own experience, is it varies across the board. There are some parents who are very concerned about side effects, other ones who don't think that it's a big deal. And they aren't aware of these long COVID statistics. And then there are other parents who just want to know what the best shot is, what's the best decision. And so for, it's important for us to lay out that data exactly as Ann mentioned, because what Moderna is presenting today are three important findings. The immunobridging study saying the same antibody level, if not a little bit more than what adults saw, which may translate into protection against severe illness. That efficacy rate of about 30 to 50 percent, depending on the age group, which again, that's efficacy against any symptomatic COVID-19 infection, which we want to prevent the severe hospitalizations and also the safety. Their trial showed zero cases of myocarditis. So I think being transparent, explaining why this has been so drawn out and realizing that a lot of parents out there have already made up their mind. And we may not get to a high adoption rate like we wanted and like what we saw with the adult vaccines. And that's OK, because what is important is that we're giving parents the choice, especially those parents who have those children under the age of five or high risk or immunocompromised. And 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 if, if I could just ask you about uh, Dr. Fauci uh, made a bold statement. He says we're out of the pandemic. He backtracked a little bit later. But uh, when there's full acknowledgement that the worst days are over, how could we see policy changes on how we deal with the virus, do you think? Well, you know, Terry, of course, we're still seeing 300 deaths a day. Um, and all of that could change if there is a new variant. So I, I think Dr. Fauci is very much aware of that, but he also wants to acknowledge that we're not where we were in 2020. I do think what we're going to see change, of course, Tuesday is supposed to be the deadline for when the CDC would uh, let the mask mandate, the travel mask mandate expire. That, of course, there was a, a federal court ruling that um, made that null and void. I don't think that you're going to see CDC push on that and try to get that reinstated. 
they are appealing that court ruling to retain their authority, but that's different than trying to get it reinstated. So I think that that is probably lifted for the time being. I think you're also going to see the administration uh, try to continue to push not using health laws like Title 42 to apply to migration problems at the border. That's going to be another issue. All right, more to come. Dr. Patel and Flaherty, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.